Welcome back to Demystifying Medicine, your favorite medical myth debuster show. I'm Dr. Dias, and today we're joined by Dr. McGinnis, Dr. Patel, and Dr. Chan on our Demystifying panel. Today, our episode is dedicated to questions from the audience. First up, we have Waleed. Hi, everyone. Hello, Waleed. Thank you for joining us today. What is your Demystifying Medicine question? Um, I'm getting married next month, and I'm trying to lose weight, so I did some research online and I heard about low carb diet and it really didn't explain online what it actually was. So could you provide me with an explanation? Well, uh, low carb diets call for a reduction in carbohydrates. So you would have to avoid foods such as bread, rice and grains, and also foods high in sugar, such as pop and baked goods. And you try and substitute them with foods high in protein, fiber and fat. Oh, I see. So you reduce the amount of carbs in your diet. What effect does that have on your body? Let's look at how carbohydrates normally function in your body. Foods such as bread, pop, and potatoes contain starch and other carbohydrates, which are chains of glucose molecules that are easily broken down to be used by the body for energy. These glucose molecules are the body's favorite source of energy and spend time circulating in the blood until they're given entry into the cells by insulin. Insulin is a hormone secreted by the pancreas and functions like a key to allow glucose into the cells to be used for energy. The more carbohydrates we eat, the more glucose there is in the blood, and the more insulin is secreted to help glucose be used for energy by the cells. But if the body is unable to use all these glucose molecules, they get converted to triglycerides, otherwise known as fat molecules, which get stored in your muscle cells. This is why eating excess carbohydrates, especially in the form of sugar, can contribute to fat production in the body, causing weight gain and other harmful effects in the body. Now, when it comes to low-carb diets, reducing the amount of starch in the diet results in a decreased amount of glucose in the blood. This tells the pancreas that not a lot of insulin is needed, decreasing blood sugar insulin levels as well. The body is then forced to use its existing energy sources, such as its fat stores for energy production. These fat molecules can be converted into molecules such as ketone bodies, which are used for energy in the cells through a process known as dietary ketosis. So essentially, low-carb diets really cause you to burn fat stores instead of building fat stores. It's starting to make sense now. How are low-carb diets different from low-fat diets? Well, a low-fat diet aims to reduce the amount of fat that you intake into your, um, within your diet, but doesn't really aim to address the excess carbohydrates in your diet and how those can be converted into fat. Oh, I see. So it seems like low-carb diets are much more effective than low-fat diets. Is that true? That's definitely a great question, Waleed. Um, a study done by Samaha and other colleagues um, looked at 132 individuals with severe obesity um, who were assigned to adopt um, a low-carb diet or a low-fat diet. Um, they found that the low-carb diet um, lost on average 5.9 kilograms, whereas in the low-fat diet group lost approximately 1.9 kilograms. This shows that the low-carb diet group can be a more of an effective short-term weight loss strategy. Also another study done on 53 healthy but obese females um, who were randomly assigned to low-fat or low-carb diets. Not only did the females in the low-carb diet lost significant amounts of weight, but also there were reductions in blood triglycerides, meaning or suggesting improvements in cardiovascular health. That's great. So would you recommend going on a low-carb diet? Well, I think before we recommend, it's important to consider the benefits and the risks involved with low-carb diets. One significant benefit is that decreasing carbohydrate intake reduces blood sugar levels, decreases blood pressure, reduces the amount of fat and triglycerides in the blood, as well as boosts the levels of HDL cholesterol, also known as the good cholesterol in the body. Studies show that these effects have proven effective in improving and preventing conditions such as metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. Additionally, low-carb diets result in mainly fat loss from the belly area and around the liver, which is known as visceral fat. This loss of visceral fat can actually be very beneficial, as it's the fat that can lead to inflammation and disease. However, there are also some risks and shortcomings um, that low-carb diets can cause. So, low-carbohydrate intake forces the body to switch to using ketone bodies as a source of energy instead of glucose. High ketone levels can lead to what is called ketogenic acidosis, when your blood actually increases in acidity and can lead to symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and nausea. Additionally, 
While low carb diets seem effective in weight loss in the short term, they don't necessarily work in the long term. Studies show that when you look at different weight loss strategies over a two year period as opposed to only six months, the benefits of low carb diets compared to low fat diets seems to disappear. I have a final question. Um, based on what we learned today, would you recommend going on a low carb diet? Well, the take home message from today is that low carb diets can be um, effective weight loss strategies resulting in fat uh, reduction. Um, as well as serving uh, several health benefits. However, uh, it is important to consider the risk factors involved and that being on a health balanced diet is important and necessary for good health. For sure, yes, I totally agree. I think um, low carb diets can definitely serve as beneficial for a lot of people, um, but also not as beneficial for others. So I think the most important thing is to make sure that you consult your physician um, and discussing with your physician, deciding the best path for weight loss that works for you. Great. Thank you very much. That helped you. No problem, Willie. I hope that helped you understand about low carb diets as well. Thank you for watching our episode of Demystifying Medicine today, and don't forget to tune in to our other episodes at demystifyingmedicine.ca. See you next time.